Ranger. Are you silver? A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Okay, boys, let's get out of here. Hello, I've heard there's trouble in Gunstock. What kind of trouble, Kimisami? I'm not sure yet. But Sheriff Bennett may need our help. Now, Gunstock three days right from here. Then we better hurry. my company's price for protecting your property, Mrs. Miggs. The contracts are already drawn up that way. Fifty a week? Why, my cafe don't take in more than that. I know how much your restaurant makes. The more valuable the property, Mrs. Miggs, the higher the cost of protecting it. Don't give me that. Before you got here, Hanford, nobody needed any protection. Gunstock was a peaceful, law-abiding town. It's going to be that way again. Are you ready to sign the contracts? Not at fifty a week, I'm not. I'll, I'll give you thirty. The price is still 50, and liable to go up. Sign both copies, all very legal. Legal, my eye. What's legal about my paying you so I can stay in business? You ain't fooling me for a minute, Hanson. Hello, Jack. Oh, hi, Dad. Any luck? No. Not one single clue points to Hanford. Even if Jake lives, he won't talk. Make me a deputy, Dad. Let me help. Well, look, son, I've told you before, you're not going to get mixed up in this sort of thing. You stick to your law books. Oh, hang it, Dad. Reading all the time and wearing these glasses, people think... Well, they think I'm not much of a guy. <laughs> they will when you're a judge, son. But, Dad, look... Howdy, sir. I didn't hear you knock, Hanford. I never got anywhere knocking on doors. I want to talk to you. There's only one thing I've got to say to you. Let's get out of town and get out fast. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Yes, you are. You're a crook, Hanford. A dirty, rotten crook. That was a pretty strong word, sir. Know anybody that agrees with you? Your thugs have got people too scared to talk right now. But they'll say plenty once they feel safe. No witnesses, no complaints. <laughs> You haven't got much of a case. Enough to call in the Texas Rangers. I'm running a legitimate business. You'll just make a fool of yourself. I'll take my chances. Now look, Bennett. Don't try to stir up a lot of trouble over nothing. I'm in the clear. But uh, I'm willing to make a deal. You've had your deal. 24 hours to get out of town. Don't try to bluff me, Bennett. If you had anything on me, you'd be arresting instead of threatening. Think it over. I'll be back later. Come on, Duke. He calls in Texas Rangers. We're in trouble. Don't worry. I haven't seen the man yet without a price tag. He didn't talk like he was for sale. You didn't expect him to sell out in front of his kid, did you? Wait till I wave some of that green stuff in front of him. You'll think it over. Come on, let's get going. Well, Tuttle, there's Gunstock. It's worth three days' ride just to see how it's growing. It looked plenty peaceful. We'll know better after we've seen Sheriff Bennett. We'll skirt around town to his place. On, Silver. Hello, Sheriff. Don't tell me you've forgotten me. Lone Ranger. Of course I haven't forgotten you. How have you been? Right well, Jim. You, Tonto? Me fine. Well, uh, come on in. Well, it's been a long time, almost five years. Why don't you sit down and let me get some coffee? No, thanks. This isn't strictly a social call. It, uh, it isn't? No, I've heard you've been having trouble here in Gunstock. Trouble? Oh, oh, that! Oh, it, uh, 
Didn't amount to anything at all. What happened? Nothing much. At least I wouldn't call it trouble. Oh, they had a fight last week at Clancy's place, but I, I straightened that out. And then uh, three days ago, the barber blew himself up. How did he do that? Well, messing around with blasting powder. Silly fool nearly killed himself. That's, uh, that's all the trouble I know about. Looks as though we were mistaken, Tonto. We thought you might have needed some help. Well, believe me, I sure appreciate it. I'm sorry you went to so much bother. It was worth it just to see you again, Jim. By the way, where's your boy Jack? Jack? Uh, oh, oh well, uh, he's back east to law school. He left two days ago. I know how much you wanted that for the boy. Glad you could manage. When you write, give him our best. I will. You leaving? If you don't need us, we'll find someone else who does. Goodbye, Jim. So long, Ranger. Tonto, goodbye. I didn't like the way Bennett acted. Well, him jumpy as cat. He seemed almost too frightened of us. Why him afraid? We his friends. He's like a different man. He even looks different. A man can change much in five years. Perhaps he's changed a lot more than we realize. What do you mean, Kimasami? I'm sure he was hiding something from us. You think him do something wrong? I think he lied about the trouble in Gunstock. I'm going to find out why. Well, what you do now? We'd better make camp. Then you help me into a disguise. Hey, old timer. Old fella's new, isn't he? When'd you get him? Last week. Works for three squares a day in a bunk in the back room. Say, ain't you got anything more important to do than worry about my hired help? I'll just ask him. Oh, I could ask a few questions myself. Uh, how about some more coffee? Yeah. Pretty funny the way some folks gets rich all of a sudden. One day, they're broke as anybody else, and the next day, they're sending their kids back east to fancy schools. Well, uh, Jack got a scholarship. That's why he had to leave so quick. Oh, sure. I'll bet he'd be pretty proud to know where that scholarship came from. What are you getting at? Nothing that the whole town don't know. You and Hanford. If anybody'd ever told me that you... Howdy, Mrs. May. Howdy. Hello, sir. I hear somebody stole McNeil's front gate last night. I think you ought to look into it. I want to talk to Mrs. Mink. I was just leaving. Get that old coot out of here. Oh, he's deaf as a post. I don't care. Get rid of him. Hey, old timer. Hey? Sweep up the storeroom, will you? I ain't finished in here. Do like I say. <laughs> old crow is a pester. And never got a chance to get my work done. I think it was helpful to me. I'll sign for these. I don't know what good it'll do. You and your men have been signing for weeks. Ain't seen anybody paying up yet. Well, we'll get around to it someday. Mrs. Meeks, I hear you've been complaining about the high cost of living. I've been paying you, ain't I? That's right. But I like my clients to be happy. Maybe you'd be happier at 75 a week. I can't pay that much, and you know it. We're getting more trade after what happened to Clancy's. I'd hate to see this place wrecked as bad. I can't do it, I tell you. I got additional expenses. I bet you have. Sheriffs cost money. Chief, keep talking. Like I was saying, Mrs. Meigs, it's expensive to run any kind of business. And I got to show a profit. Just as I... Well, I mean, oh, I weren't doing nothing. Take your dirty paws off him. Well, he was listening, wasn't he? Picking on a poor, defenseless old man. Are you all right, old timer? Don't feel so good. I hope you're proud of yourselves. He's too deaf to have heard a word you said. Then what was he doing at the door? Probably watching the two of you. Couldn't believe such yellow skunks existed. Now, wait a minute. Wait, nothing. I can be pushed around just so far by critters like you. Now, get out of my place. You don't mean that. I'm mad clear through. I ain't scared of you anymore, Hanford. You'll be sorry that you aren't. I'm only sorry I didn't get this mad sooner. Get out of before I forget I'm a lady. Come on, Duke. You shouldn't have done that on my account, ma'am. The body's got to stand up for his rights sometime. You go to your room and lie down for a spell. Don't you worry about me. Thank you, Mrs. Miggs. Took me a week to get a tunnel, but that's a whole story. Hanford's collecting tribute from every merchant in town. And then Sheriff tell a lie. I suspect even worse than that. It's hard, but it looks like Hanford's paying Bennett off. Well, what do we do? We're going to have another chat with Bennett. And right away? Yes, tunnel right away. Gunstock's going to be cleaned up whether he's for us or against us.
around to the back. He may not be alone. What in the... Oh, you. Well, I didn't expect you back in these parts. I haven't been away. You haven't? No, I've been checking up on a man named Hanford. What about him? Don't you know? What are you driving at? You knew Hanford's gang was forcing money out of every merchant in this town. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> That's what's bothering you, huh? Well, I investigated those rumors myself. A lot of folks around here don't like Hanford. Just talk against him, that's all. I've seen him collect the money myself. Oh? Five years ago, if any man had told me you'd sell out to a crook, I'd have called him a liar. I didn't sell out. Then you'll either clean up this town or call in the Texas Rangers to do it for you. I can't call for him. According to law, they need a written request from the local sheriff. Write it. I'll see that it's delivered. Suppose I refuse. Then I'll know what I came here to find out. That you're in league with Hanford. I'll write it. Don't reach for your gun. I never thought you'd sink so low, Jim. I never thought I'd have to. But I'd kill myself before I'd write that letter. Meaning you have no objections to killing me? No, but I won't have you interfering with my plans. Drop gun. Good work, Tonto. Now we'll see about that letter. Nothing on earth will make me write that letter. Sit down, Jim. I think I owe you an apology. What do you mean? There's a limit to what a man will do for money. No limit to what he'll do for someone he loves. Hanford's got your boy, hasn't he? No. No, that isn't true. Do you know where they're holding him? Jackson Law School. I want to help you, Jim. Then leave me alone. Hanford's kind have to be run out of the West. I'm going after him. But I don't want to endanger Jack's life if I can help it. You've got to tell me what you know. You go after Hanford now, my son will be killed. How do you know? Tell me what happened. Well, Hanford tried to bribe me twice. When he saw it wouldn't work, he had his gang take Jack. Have you heard from the boy at all? Yeah. I got this the day he disappeared. Oh, it's no use. My boy is being held prisoner, and he'll be killed if there's one move against Hanford. Let her print it. They made Jack sign it to prove he's alive. John R. Bennett. This is his signature. Yeah, but there's something wrong with it. What do you mean? Well, his middle initial isn't R. There's two T's in Bennett. I only used one. R and T. He's trying to tell you something. But what? There's no place around here with initials like that. And it wouldn't be where he's being held. Hanford's smart. He'd have kept the boy blindfolded. Well, what is it? R-T or T-R. They could be somebody's initials, of course. The man that's holding him prisoner. Is there anyone in Hanford's gang with those initials? I don't know. Think. Think, Jim. It's important. Well, let's see. There's Duke, Grizzly, Nelson. Oh, what good's a name? That's all we've got to go on, Jim. Think. I can't. I can't remember all their names. I know somebody who may. Come on, Tonto. Where are you going? I'm going to get your boy. Stay here until I send word to you. Put up your hands, you. Let me explain, Mrs. Miggs. There's nothing to explain. I knew Hanford would try something. We're not from Hanford. We're your friends. Not in that mask, you're not. I never saw you before in my life. Hey, who does? Does what? Sleeps like a bear. Who are you? You call me old timer. I'm a man who wants Hanford in jail where he belongs. We need your help. I don't know your name, but I like what you say. Come out of this dustbin and tell me some more. How do you mean I can help? Just about everyone in town eats here. Do you know any member of Hanford's gang whose initials are R.T. or T.R.? Hmm. Most of those buzzards don't have any last names. It's very important, Mrs. Miggs. There's an awful lot of them. Too darn many, if you ask me. They've been eating up my profits like a herd of... Say, hey, wait a minute. Do you think of a name? No, but I think I can find it. They've been signing for vittles like a herd of free-spending sidewinders ever since they hit town. No, no, that's not the one. That's Grizzly. He signs with two X's. Here. Here it is. R. Turner. You know his first name? Um, Ralph, uh, Robert, um, Rod. Rod Turner. He ain't been around for a while. And he's our man. 
Can you tell me what he looks like? Yeah, he's uh, short and fat and half bald and squints like, um, well, like I'm squinting now. Good. Tell her you know what to do. Leave the message, then hurry right back. Ah. Hey, would somebody mind telling me what's going on around here? I'll explain in a minute, Mrs. Miggs. Good luck, Tonto. My plan worked out right. We'll have Hanford and his gang just where we want them. What's going on? Well, this Indian claims he's got a message for you from Rod. What message? He says Rod wants to see you right away. That's all I can get out of him. How do you know it's on the level? I don't. So Rod gave you a message to give to me, huh? Him say you pay money. What does he look like, uh, the man that promised you the money? Him tall, short? Him short. Uh-huh. What else? Him say you pay money. No, no. What else does he look like? Uh, him short, fat, no hair. Him make face with eyes. That's Rod, all right. Yeah. Where did you meet him? In wood. Where in wood? Uh, by a tree. At what tree? The tree. Which side of town? You pay money. No, look, I'm not giving you a cent until you answer me. Which side of town? Guess he just doesn't understand you, boss. I'm not so sure about that. I'll bet Bennett's in back of this. A trap, huh? I don't know. But I'm not taking any chances. Look, Engine, you and me are going to take a little ride. And if you're not telling me the truth, there's going to be another hole in that dumb face of yours. Me do like man say, me know what. Shut up! I'm taking the engine with me up to Rod's. You two ride behind. Stay way behind, just in case somebody tries to follow me. If this is a trap, I'm going to close it on whoever said it. Tie his wrist. As soon as we ride after Jack, you go to see Bennett. Tell him it's now or never to round up the Hanford gang. It'll be a pleasure. I'm getting worried about Tonto. He's taking too long. Well, Hanford's a slick article. He may have... There's Hanford now with Tonto. The engine's wrists are tied, and he's shaking his head. He's warning me not to follow him. What are you going to do? I'll follow him, of course. Oh, but if Hanford's suspicious, that'll be dangerous. I'll have to take that risk. You go to see Bennett. see this engine before? No. Why? He says you gave him a message for me. I didn't send any message. Why did he say that? I don't know. That's what we're going to find out. Come on, engine. Keep him covered, Tony. All right, engine. How did Bennett know that Turner had the kid here, huh? Come on, talk. I haven't got all day. Shall I give him the work for us? No, never mind. I'll take care of him myself. Just keep them covered. Come on, talk. I told you to. People do what I say. Tony, when you got their hands tied and a gun on them. Talk like that don't rile me, kid. A smart man makes his own odds. You're gonna talk if I have to break every bone in... Keep them covered, Tony. Did anybody try to follow you? Didn't see a soul, except a fellow on a white horse heading up country. You sure he didn't see you? Yeah, had a chance. We were too far away. Good. So you don't make the trip for nothing. Take some blasting powder back with you for the Meeks place tonight. Go get it. What about the Indian? Was he telling the truth? No. But I'm gonna knock it out of him. Come on. You're gonna talk if I have to blow your brains out. Ben and Hyde, didn't you? Tonto won't talk to you, Craig. Tonto, huh? How come you know his name? I don't. It, it just popped out. I never... Are you lying? I told you, old man, what I'd do if he interfered. And this is one promise I figure on keeping. If we get rid of the kid, how are we going to handle Bennett? We don't have to worry about Bennett. Wait. Whoever's out there will blast you before you can get to it. If there's enough powder out there to blow up a mountain. Yeah. All right, you. You're going out there and pull that fuse out. 
And don't try anything funny, because I'm going to have a gun right at your back. Hurry it up. Go on, get moving. He got away. We're trapped. What do we do? We can't stay Learn here. There's one thing we can do. Make a run for it. Give me your gun. But they'll, they'll kill us. It's better than taking a chance of being blown to bits. Come on, get going. No, no, Mr. Howard, hand it up. I'll finish, Hanford. The powder is going to blow. I never knew a man could be so afraid of an empty tin can. Yeah, so Hanford was the man who couldn't be bluffed. You know, this town will never be able to thank you enough. As for me, well, you know how I feel about it. You did your part, Sheriff, by rounding up the rest of the gang. <laughs> well, for once, I won't have any trouble finding witnesses. The whole town wants to testify. Hanford has enough cash to pay back most of the money he took. We're going to use part of it to pay the damage he done Clancy and Jake. <laughs> That's fine. Study hard, Jack. The West is growing fast. It needs good laws to take care of men like Hanford. I'll study, all right, and thank you for everything. Goodbye, Mrs. Miggs. It was a pleasure working for you. Oh, shucks. Don't talk about that. <laughs> Come on, Tonto. He's the best cleaner upper I ever saw. Started by sweeping out my place and ended by cleaning up the whole town. <laughs> Who is he, anyway? Well, couldn't you guess? He's the Lone Ranger. Hello, get over there! Hello! 